Anthony Edwards just delivered likely the dunk of the year, delivering this thunderous slam over John Collins, but unfortunately as he was going up, it looked like he suffered an injury to one of his fingers. And in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at the play, what exactly happened, and if there's any long-term concern here, regarding Ant's possible finger injury. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal on this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. This is one I gotta show you in full speed first. I mean, this was just unreal with Anthony Edwards over John Collins. But as he goes up here, look what happens with his left hand. And specifically, I think it's his middle finger that got injured. So as he goes up here, we can even see how distorted John Collins' face gets here because of Anthony Edwards' finger appearing to get jammed or likely hyperextend, meaning bend backwards as a result of poking into poor John Collins' face here. Now, Collins had to leave the floor for a little bit. Hopefully he's doing okay. As we can see though, continues to go up here. That finger is still hyperextended, meaning bent backwards on Collins' face, finally releases off. And then as Edwards comes through on the rest of the play here, we see him point to the camera and just show his hand and I think the finger that we're concerned about is going to be this one right here. So his middle finger, likely what I think is a dorsal dislocation of his proximal interphalangeal joint or a dorsal PIP dislocation. Quick anatomy lesson here with our biodigital anatomy tools. So looking at a hand, of course we have the thumb. The thumb is on the radial side of the hand. The pinky is on what we call the ulnar side of the hand. And then we have the thumb, the pointer finger or index finger the long finger or the middle finger, the ring finger, and then the small or the pinky finger. These joints right here are going to be the joints between the metacarpal bones and the phalanges. But then we have these three phalanges. You have a proximal phalanx, a middle phalanx, and a distal phalanx. This joint right here is going to be the proximal, meaning it's closer to the rest of the body, interphalangeal joint, so proximal joint between the two phalanxes. And then this is going to be the distal, inner phalangeal joint. So proximal, distal, and it looks like it was likely this joint right here that dislocated for Edwards. Now we define these dislocations based on the direction of this further segment. So if this further segment, that middle phalanx goes up towards the back of the hand, we call that a dorsal dislocation. If it goes down forward, we call that a volar dislocation. And the dorsal dislocations where it goes up are going to be much more common. And so what you'll see in that case is an increased prominence of that part of the knuckle on that inner volar side of the hand because this part of the finger has gone that way. And so then we see this part of the phalanx sticking out more prominent. And this looks like what we're seeing here with Edwards. So as we go through slowly on this final sequence, we can see how that middle finger looks to be bent kind of awkwardly. There looks to be a little bit more prominence of that volar side of that joint right there with that distal location back dorsal. So I suspect still again, based on this view, dorsal dislocation of that PIP joint. Treatment for this kind of thing is pretty straightforward. You're gonna do what we call closed reduction. So you're gonna pop the finger back into place. A very simple thing, their athletic trainer, or if there's team docs there for the jazz, very capable, very easy to do this and get it back in place. Once you get it back popped in place, if it's stable, meaning it stays in place, if it's the middle of the game, you don't have access to x-ray. As long as it's stable when you pop it back in, you can buddy tape it to the other nearby finger like we see here with Edwards and let him go back in and play. If it keeps popping out, that suggests there could be a big fracture chunk sitting there inside the finger, and so then you're gonna hold them out because of that unstable joint. The long-term treatment and just recovery time then depends on if there is a fracture. Number one, was the joint stable? Presumably yes, because they were able to tape it, get him back in the game, but I don't think they were able to get x-rays in that short amount of time for him to get back out there and shoot the free throw. So expect him to get x-rays after the game. If there's a fracture and it involves a certain extent of that joint where those two bones articulate, then sometimes you need to do surgery for these types of things. But if it's a small enough fracture or there's no fracture, then it's just gonna be a period of time in a splint or buddy taped with those fingers together, unless there's something else unusual like a tendon injury, which they just might not have picked up right away. So I'm hopeful that unless we see a big fracture, this should not be an issue for Edwards going forward. I do expect that he'll probably have those fingers taped for a number of weeks or so while that joint kind of scars down and heals up, but shouldn't be necessarily a long-term thing unless we find a major fracture. So that's it for the video. Crazy dunk of the year play. Hopefully Edwards is okay. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.